Today we have uh, Lisa Rissmiller uh, with us. She is the Secretary of the Board of Trustees at the University of Dayton. So I'd like to welcome Lisa to the conversation. In addition to that role specifically, she is the Administrative Liaison to the Committee of Trustees, which is similar to the Governance Committee concept we have in our XBSS network. And Lisa has been at the university since 1997. Lisa, welcome. I'll, I'll have you just kind of share a little bit more about uh, yourself, your role, uh, a little bit more about the, the board itself. Yeah, certainly. So um, yes, I have been at UD. I'm coming up on my 25th anniversary. So the University of Dayton is located in Dayton, Ohio. It is the largest um, private institution in the state of Ohio with a total enrollment of about 12,000 students at this point. So it's a fairly decent size institution. In my um, almost 25 years at UD, I have spent over 10 years with the Board of Trustees in two five-year stints. Uh, I did that for my first five years here. Then I did another role at the university for about 13 years and then came back to this role about five years ago. I think I'm in year six now. So what's been interesting to me having done that with a 13 year gap in the middle is, you know, basically the, the mission and the function of the board hasn't changed, um, but how it operates has changed dramatically in that time. And I think that speaks to um, really how higher ed has changed in that time. So our board of trustees is an elected board of trustees. It, it, it can range in size from 15 to uh, 40 members. Right now we have 38 trustees. So it's a pretty sizable board. Um, our sponsoring religious order, the Society of Mary, um, holds 20% of the seats on our board of trustee. And that's many of the, that's the way they really remain um, very actively involved in our board of trustees. Our trustees, the vast majority of them are alumni, although not all of them are, and um, they are carefully vetted and, and recruited to come on the board. And they can serve, they're elected for three-year terms. They can serve up to three three-year terms consecutively. So they can serve um, up to nine years in a row. And that, that's kind of the structure of it. So um, the self-evaluation, the self-assessment that we are um, talking about today. So our board governance committee developed a document in 2016 that we call trustees roles, responsibilities and expectations. And I know Patrick, you have that document here. And you know, it's, it, was, it was interesting. And again, this is where this two five-year stints um, perspective is interesting to me. We had never really written down what were the expectations of our trustees? And so the Committee on Trustees really worked um, very carefully to put down um, really um, a kind of a prescription of what it means to be a University of Dayton trustee and, and what it doesn't mean to be a University of Dayton trustee. So when the, the Governance Committee, I'll call it the Governance Committee, um, when the Governance Committee put this back out in front of the full board membership, I was a little surprised how enthusiastically they embraced this because they said it's really good for us to see in writing what are the expectations for us? You know, what are the limits of our role? Even though we had a, um, um, a very, um, very in-depth uh, new trustee orientation, um, but still this is, this is a succinct two-page document about what does it mean to be a UD trustee? So we use it for that purpose, but it's also a really helpful document when we are in the process of cultivating new trustees. Um, so when our president and our vice president for advancement are having those early conversations with potential trustee candidates, this gives them something to put in front of those individuals and to say, this is what it means. Um, you know, we know you're a loyal alum, we know you love the institution, um, but do you, do you have the time, the energy, the resources to do these things? This is what's expected. And that's been really, really helpful too. So, um, so, so that's the roles, responsibilities, and expectations. And I make a point to talk about that because that document became the basis for our self-assessment instrument. So that's the other document that you have up here. So if you compare the two, they're almost point by point. Um, um, and they, they align very much in that way, kind of point by point. So here's how we use the self-assessment instrument. Every October or early November, I send this instrument out to all 38 members of our board. 
and ask them to complete it. Now, for trustees who are getting near the end of one of their three-year terms, um, we ask them to submit their responses back to us. Um, other trustees who are not at one of those breakpoints, we really just send it to them as a reminder and um, as a, you know, just a way of them kind of refresh themselves and kind of ask themselves, okay, yeah, this is my role. Is, is this what I'm doing? Um, and that, that's, that's helpful in and of itself just to have that reminder. For the um, trustees who are up for re-election, so those are people who are in year three or year six, um, we ask them to send it back in, and then those responses get compiled and they get shared with our university president and the chair of our board. And those two, um, one or both of them, then have a close-the-loop conversation with each individual trustee who has submitted their answers back. And it really is really helpful. It gives that um, trustee an opportunity to uh, give specific feedback. It helps us understand, and it's particularly helpful, I think, for trustees who are at the three-year mark, where we may find that maybe they need a little extra support in one of these areas or that something isn't entirely clear to them. Um, it also is helpful, um, particularly for trustees who are closer to the six-year mark, where we may say, um, you know, this is perhaps somebody who's really ready for um, a more significant leadership role in the board of trustees. So it's really helpful for that. So, and then we have just an open-ended question here that, um, you know, I think sometimes after going through this document, we get trustees who will say, um, uh, you know, that we'll, it's surprising sometimes what we hear from that. Um, and some useful Sometimes it's some very useful feedback that we wouldn't necessarily, there's not really any mechanism that we would necessarily have that come out um, in the future. Um, so that's the way we use it. Uh, it's, um, I think we're in our third year now of using this on an annual basis. And it's really turned out to be um, a good process um, really what we use it for in addition to having these conversations is ultimately that conversation between the board chair and the president and the trustee culminates with a mutual decision about whether or not that individual wants to stand for re-election to another three-year term. And uh, it was interesting last year, um, for the first time we had a trustee who was at the six-year mark um, who not for any reasons really related to the university, but more personal reasons in his life, he's getting ready to retire, sell his business. You know, this gave him an opportunity, opened the door for him to say, I think I'm going to end my service here at year six. I'm not going to be reelected. And that's helpful because in the past, we pretty much assumed that someone wanted to be reelected unless they told us otherwise. So this really gives... Uh, an opportunity for a thoughtful, considered conversation about whether or not to serve another three years, which is a significant commitment. I could interject. I think that's a great sure. point. And I, I don't mm -hmm. want to speak for all the schools in our right. network, but perhaps I am. And I, I have a feeling that we may also make that assumption mm -hmm. as well, that when folks hit the three-year mark, the six-year mark, there's right. just an assumption right. they're going to want to roll into mm -hmm. you know, another term. And so to bring mm -hmm. some intentionality to uh, using those points, three, six sure. uh, years to have the conversation, I, I think is a, a good practice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it has been helpful. Not, and, and not just in this one case where we really kind of opened that door, but, you know, it helps everyone know that if someone is signing on for another three-year terms, they remain committed at the same level that they have been. Um, and, you know, doing it through this self-assessment, which is meant to be a reflective document, you know, really, I think helps the trustee think about, this is what they have told us. It really makes them think about, do I have the time, the energy, you know, whatever to serve another three years, given this is what's expected of me. Um, and and it's, it really has been a beneficial process. Great. Lisa, you and I connected ahead of this Zoom, and I want to bring up, uh, you know, two points that you had mentioned in that conversation as well, that there were some byproducts to this self-assessment, and they struck me as particularly interesting. One was that you all, I'm putting words in your mouth here, but feel free to comment, you all found that this also became an avenue to explore 
perhaps different interests some trustees would have with different committees that maybe again you know they came in with a certain mm -hmm. skill set so mm -hmm. you just ordinarily you know plug them into finance right. or advancement or marketing but after this self assessment realize they had budding interests and perhaps a skill right. set to be considered in another committee so if you could speak to that one and then the second one you also talked about it brought a little bit more transparency to just board leadership and you mm -hmm. know again allowing folks to express interest either in themselves or in other uh, trustees for, for board leadership roles. Right, right. Well, so to your first point, um, we've actually, actually, I think even revised the form um, slightly to add a question, a, a, an explicit question about board committee assignments. And um, yeah, we pretty much assume, just like standing for re-election, we pretty much assume that unless someone told us they wanted a committee change, um, that they would remain where they were uh, and oftentimes, um, you know, trustees, we have 11 standing committees. So there are lots of opportunities to serve. And all of our trustees serve on at least three, sometimes four or more committees. Um, but there, there again, there wasn't an avenue for people to say they wanted a change. So as part of these conversations with self-assessment, we explicitly ask them, are you happy with your committee assignments? Is there something else you'd like to explore or some other area you think you can contribute? Um, and we don't get a lot of changes out of that, but uh, I, people do appreciate being asked because sometimes they feel like they're locked in. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and sometimes, you know, that can be re-energizing to switch one of your committees and you learn about a whole new area of the university and you interact with a different group of trustees. So it's, it's good to move people around somewhat, just not too much, uh, I think. And then to your point about the overall board assessment and board leadership. So I mentioned before that the self-assessment sometimes can give us some insights into um, an individual trustees, their interest in or their desire to take on some type of a leadership role uh, in the board. And that can come out again, kind of organically in these conversations. Um, but it also uh, helps us uh, talk to them about what the future of board leadership looks like, what openings are going to be coming up and, um, and helps us be more transparent about that. Um, when I think back to the last comprehensive board assessment that we did, which was in 2017, uh, one of the probably primary points of feedback that we got back was that the that trustees, rank and file trustees, felt like there was a lack of transparency about how um, leadership roles were filled, how trustees, um, uh, you know, were, I don't want to say groomed, but how, how trustees um, um, rose up through the ranks into leadership roles. Uh, roles. The how board leaders were described was not very explicit in our bylaws, and I think that's actually a good thing in many ways. So that just told the governance committee that they needed to be more explicit um, and more communicative with the whole board about how those leadership processes happened. And so as a result of that, um, for example, we, our current board chairperson is in her last year as chair. And so last year we had to elect a board, ele a, a chairperson elect. So last year, because of this feedback from the overall assessment, the governance committee was very forthright with the full board throughout the year about the, you know, the um, nomination process, um, the conversations that had happened, and ultimately the um, the person who was elected, you know, just received unanimous board support. And I think a lot of that was because the board felt very engaged in that process and felt like they were really tied to that decision. So that's something, you know, that's a very concrete thing that came out of an overall board assessment that we put into practice that I think really is going to stand us well in the in the uh, with the next chairperson coming in next summer. I think, you know, he's going to come in with the full support of the board membership. 
Great. And that's actually a, a great point to kind of finish mm -hmm. on with, you know, not so much a last question, but a last commentary. So within our network, we'll be sharing with our uh, board trustees and directors some webinars on individual meeting assessments. Today, we talked about individual trustee self-assessments, but you also just mentioned that your board, the Dayton board, also embraces a full board self-assessment. Mm -hmm. And not looking for a, a full dialogue on that, but that is a mm -hmm. second instrument, correct, that you guys sure. use in addition to the individual. Entirely assessment. different process. Right, right. And and where the self-assessment is an annual process, um, it is very individually focused. It is each trustee looking at their role, their participation, their engagement, um, their interests. Um, they, you know, they can comment on some aspects of board operations, but that's really not what it's about. Um, in contrast, the overall board assessment, um, we called it a comprehensive assessment, looks at the big picture, the 30,000 foot level. It's not really about your role as an individual trustee, but it is about the operations of the board. It is about the relationship between the board and the university's administration. It is about our communications. It's about how we use our electronic portal. Um, it is, you know, wh where are some things, and this is where the governance committee is particularly interested, you know, wh where are some places where we could do things better? So my previous example about the, um, the, the chairperson elect and the leadership election processes, that there was not a sense of great transparency there. So because of that comprehensive assessment in 2017, we made a very concerted effort to be much more transparent about that. And it also led, I think, the governance committee to, be to take a more, a more active role in, in the process and, and to communicate more completely with the full board about those processes. And, you know, we heard back that, uh, yes, you heard us, you responded, and we appreciate that. You know, there's nothing worse than asking for feedback and then seeming to ignore it. So, you know, so we, there's something very concrete that we could point to to say, uh, we heard you. Um, and this is what we're doing differently as a result. So they have very different purposes. Uh, I'm a big fan of both because I think uh, they're very helpful. So we do the self-assessment on an annual basis. We last did our comprehensive in 2017, but our committee, uh, our governance committee is looking at that. So it's possible maybe even this summer we will do another one. Great, great. Yeah. Well, yeah. thank you, Lisa. I appreciate the, the comments. Sure. Is there anything in the wheelhouse of what we discussed that we didn't touch upon that you'd like to share? I, I don't think so. I don't think so. I am, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of these assessments. I think it's really, really helpful. As the person whose you know, overall board operations is my job, um, yeah, yeah, these are tasks I have to do, but I do think they really um, help our board operate more efficiently. And, and I think our trustees are much more satisfied with their service as a result. And that's really important when we're asking people to give a lot of their time, talent, and treasure to this work. Excellent. Well, Lisa, mm -hmm. thank you very much for your time today. And sure. wish you and the board uh, there at Dayton, all the best. Great. Thank you.